welcome back to the channel so i messed up on this one and i kind of jumped the gun and then i was literally like already into it and then i asked ed i was like should i make a video on this one i don't think we've made a video on this so far on this channel so boat motor covers um i do a handful of them for people and is i run the same deal as i do with my uh the wheel jobs so i do these for 200 sadly so it's not it's not a lot of money but this goes again towards paying for race car stuff so it's basically we just kind of use up uh what i consider leftovers off you know jobs between you know a little bit of primer uh sometimes we have to purchase base coat and um you know clear coat kind of blends in with the rest of the business but i sling these for straight cash so what you got is your typical uh, dry rotted sunburnt sun damaged uh boat motor cover and as you can see it had you know the there was a 90 so the numbers are raised because what has happened is there were stickers here and everything else around it was like you know sun damaged like all this up here okay where the paints just completely come apart so the material around it has basically like rotted and so these are raised up um you have your decals on the side all that what i used to do is i try to use an eraser wheel uh, like we typically use on all of our other projects you have a big eraser in the shape of a wheel that goes on your drill we went over it before but the problem with these boat motor covers when they get this old is that the sticker is no longer like it's, it's hard it's hardened all up and it just won't come off of the racer wheel so you really destroy the racer wheel and sometimes it ends up destroying the material around it so another best thing that i've been doing for a while now is a razor blade taking a razor blade and just scratching it all up so you can see on the front right here i actually did a razor blade on this one so the glue is actually still on there but you can see where the razor blade has scratched all the existing paint and then i just thought about this one i said well on this one i was like because it's all about how fast i can get these done that's the only way it makes it worth you know the 200 so i said well how about we try a 90 degree grinder so i knew this was going to be a little aggressive this is 36 grit on our 90 degree grinder um, but i said you know if technically if you're riding on top of the vinyl only and not really too much on the paint then it shouldn't eat down into into the fiberglass so that's what i did i just worked it a little at a time like this um you know pretty fast try to stay on top of the vinyl of course as soon as it cuts through the vinyl then you know you keep it moving uh and then feather out your edge so if you could feel it it's not really gouged up so i actually like this method a ton um it's really easy it's nowhere near as hard to do as sit here and shaking this thing on a stand scraping it with a razor blade um, on the back side right here we're now we just got started sanding right here and i stopped that's why i said i need to film it what we're going to do is take our 80 grit on our da and we're just going to smooth all this out um, and then how this is uneven here instead of just depending on primer we're going to probably sling a little body filler over this area right here because this is i guess this took the beating the most from the sun and just make sure that's all the same um uh, the same level if you had dolphin glaze dolphin glaze would be probably better uh, but i currently don't have no dolphin glaze here today and i'm not going to paint store to buy some so i'll just do a swipe over this with body filler and then sand it out um to get it all the same thing so we're just gonna bust this whole uh cover down with 80 grit knock all of the loose paint off all of the edges i'm not gonna worry too much like up inside of here but we will at least get up in here because you can see that under the cover and then we have to sand our cover down so our cover we've taken it off it's like you can literally hear it cracking and um it's really brittle but we're going to come through here with probably 180 or 80 on this one and also just sand some of this down and then put a real thick coat of primer on it i already told the gentleman that this honestly might just not be worth it that he might need to just buy another one and he said he will and i told him i didn't know if all of them cracks right there if you can see them okay all of them if they're going to come back through the paint because you just you know you can't really feel that with like primer like you can't fill it in you'd have to i guess re-gel coat this or something it's just not worth it he's sitting by another one of them but we're gonna go ahead and knock it out for him while it's here uh with the boat uh with the boat motor cover all the same color i went this morning to the paint store and had this shot with the camera so you take it to your local paint store and if they have a camera they put a camera on it and they get a color match based off of this i told them that it probably wasn't going to be that great because the color is so faded severely and we obviously don't want to buy the manufacturer's paint because boat manufacturers charge a ton for their paint but you know he said just get it as close as we possibly could so that's what we're about to do let me get this thing 80 grit 80 grit down and then we will move on to the next step 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this body filler over this area before, while we let it dry, while we sand the rest of everything. And like I said, you'd be way better to use um, dolphin glaze. It's just gonna be easier to work with and easier to sand off. Body filler, Bondo, uh, dolphin glaze, they will all work in this situation. Um, it's just, you know, as I've showed y'all in the past, the dolphin glaze product lays out better, you know, than the body filler but you're not gonna get like worse results or anything. It's just gonna be easier to work with overall. So this whole area, and these are normally my number one trouble spots on these uh, boat covers is the back around these numbers. And then if you don't take care of this, then after you paint it, what ends up happening is we've had a couple where you can actually still see where the uh, numbers were on the back and you don't want that. So make sure you don't bury your screw holes obviously you don't want to do a ton of sanding on these things because they're so dry rotted and brittle. But we just want a decent spread across this backside. And that's going to give us a perfect foundation to sand on. And then by the time we put our primer over top of that, we'll be good to go. So that's it. We got them all prepped out, ready for primer. It only took about uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes max. Now, what you could do on yours is, this is just how I do my $200 specials. You know, if you wanted to take this thing and re-gel coat this, you that probably would be better, refiber glass it. A uh, lot more work, you know. I don't charge, the customers are coming to me for the $200 special, not a $600 to $1,000 uh, boat motor cover job. So this is just how we do it. Uh, slinging that body filler over the front worked out perfect because now we have a nice slick flat foundation to work on top of and this is just all in 80 grit so this, everything's just roughed out in 80 grit and we'll go back over it we're going to prime it we're going to do really thick coat of primer on it and then we'll go back over it and knock that down with like a 180 and then 320 or if my primer turns out slick enough we'll just roll straight into 320 and I'll go over that whenever we go to go to prep but prep that I'll go over each step I'll, I'll take y'all all the way to paint so you can do this at your house but so far right now that's all we've done is 36 grit on a 90 degree grinder to get your decals off if you have gouges or low spots fill them in with body filler or dolphin glaze sand everything out with 80 grit uh, we took our small piece right here sanded it out with 80 grit did all of our edges rolled everything so it's nice and slick this thing is like literally severely sun damaged like falling apart like this thing you can just feel how weak and thin this plastic is over all these years um and now all we're simply going to do is just coat it with a really thick coat of a 2k uh primer so let's get at it so this is the product we are using for our primer uh this is just what my local supplier has the biggest thing is to make sure that you're using a 2k primer this mix is four to one we went over this a million times on the channel it shows right there, four to one. So you come to your column and find your four to one. Uh, we went to our four, uh, no rhyme or reason. You could go to the five, six, or seven, or one, two, three, whatever. So we went to our four with our primer, and then our next is gonna be our one column. So we're gonna match the four to this four with um, hardener. This is our hardener that we're using for it there's the part numbers and everything and if you want more information on a lot of this stuff please look back at a lot of our painting videos and other projects paint projects and salvage title projects and stuff that we've done because i've went over a lot of this stuff in depth where i don't want to keep you know boring people with it and going over it in depth every single time we bang bring the products out so we're gonna get that mixed up chunk it in our uh paint gun and lay some primer on this cover all right so we, it, man i look dirty so it is, what what day are we on? Wednesday, it's Wednesday night. Pulling a little night shift. I have got way too much work to do. So I actually come in to paint the bumper for this Chrysler Pacifica and do this boat motor cover. But now the Pacifica is puking fluids all over the ground in the front. It's a busted used radiator out of junkyard. So that's a huge setback. So I don't think I'm gonna be in as big of a hurry to paint this bumper because I don't have a radiator now. I have to water one off the internet, but we're going to get back on this boat motor cover. Um, so let's get at it. And I'll show you what the next step So is. we got it all in primer in the last clip that you've seen. Uh, three, let's see here. What is it? We got it in there Monday. So Tuesday and all day Wednesday have went by. Um, since I loaded this thing down, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if you can't really see because of all the guide code, the little craters. Uh, you kind of right there in the light. So it's got like little craters, which should all block out. Um, but since it was so rough, I loaded this thing down with primer. 
um, didn't run it, which is pretty freaking amazing. Put a little sag in it right here, but it didn't run it. Um, so we wanted to let everything shrink back. So as your primers and body fillers and all that dry, they shrink back. So if you paint it too fast, then often it will shrink back and you'll see the outlines of everything where the product basically tightened up. Um, so we wanted to let this one really set back. The customer was not in a rush to get this thing, you know, back at all. So I wanted to let it sit for a couple days, but I decided to come in tonight. Uh, like I said, I was planning on painting a bumper and this together, but that's not gonna happen. So we're just gonna get this sanded out, go ahead and run this one through paint. So it's off my to-do list, one more thing off of my list. And I think we're gonna work on the uh, F-250 Super Duty uh, until late tonight. So let's get this thing blocked out, sanded out, and then I'll show y'all the so uh, paint. So for my Blocking, all we're going to use is 320, so I just use it by the roll like this. You can pick it up at your local supplier. The brand I will use is Sunmite. This is just what my local supplier carries. Uh, you can cut this down with 180 first to get it down if you want to uh, go faster. I got to find my DA. Do you see my mess? This is always, I work at such a fast pace, like extremely fast, that I just leave stuff all over the place. Look, last place I was standing blocking. Actually, this might have been Eddie. Because Eddie was just here doing some crap. Um, he actually come back in after hours. So we're just going to use 320. Try to block it down. You can use 180 if uh, you have too much orange peel. I laid mine out really slick. I actually laid this out with my clear coat gun. So it looks really good. So I should be able to just go straight in with 320 and knock this down. But if you need to go 180, that's fine to make it cut faster. But just make sure you go back and finish it out with 320. A lot of people will say finish it out with 400, 600 because it is... Um, you know, better overall. And this actually is going silver. So it would be best to finish this out with four, 600, but this is a $200 job. We didn't sell this job as probably a six or $800 job, which is what this should be. If you go to a, you know, a body shop that should be about the going rate for this. Um, so we're just 320 should be fine to finish this out with. So let me get the DA hooked up. Let me get this all sanded out and then we'll move on to the next step. take this moment to show you you know the purpose of your guide coat so you can see right here as we cut our guide coat off if you remember this is where our 90 degree grinder went so trying to get this thing focused so you can see how my 90 degree grinder like cut in deeper right in here this is all deeper because where the sandpaper hit at is um high spots these are low spots so that's what your guide coat is for so you can see your highs and lows because like right here you can actually feel this right here this low you can it's so low you can actually feel it with your fingers um all of these are extreme lows like you can see these big gouges they were you know like messed up paint so that's what i'm looking for and you can see across the top now that everything is gone like we have one pinhole right here that i'll catch you know i just did that you know real quick over and then we're not touching our edges so you can see how i sand this how i'm not getting my edges i'm just getting my flats because then i'll take sandpaper afterwards by hand and i'll go over my edges because my da is obviously flat like that so if you try to take the da over a curve with flat you're actually cutting a flat thing it'd be like you know let's say you have a razor blade or a, a body spreader you know flat spreader imagine trying to scrape this into a circle uh, that, that doesn't work i mean you, i'm sure you've peeled a uh, apple before with a knife or even a pillar how it cuts uh, you know slices in the side of the apple and flat spots that's what it would do to this curve if you did this with the da now if you took the da and you rolled it quick um you can actually get this you know really pretty good um with it I, like i'm confident enough that i can roll this whole corner edge with the da if i needed to prove my point and clear coat it and it will look good but i'm not here to prove my point there's no reason for me to chance that you also have a higher chance of cutting through because you're on top of you know this is a mountain so you know if you had a mountain sticking up like this and you took you know right across the top of the mountain it would take the top off really quick because it's just a point you know that's the same way as this it take the top off a whole lot faster than you know a, a big curve like this you know i can roll my sander over that so be careful when you're sanding, you know, with your DA, don't mess with your curves or your body lines on any situation um, and do all these by hands. So uh, let's keep at it. There 
you go. All washed, clean, ready for paint. As you can see, I am freaking covered in dust. <laughs> and this is actually how I paint. Um, no, I blow myself off. Clean yourself off before you paint. If you're doing it at your house, you can always wait till the next day, shower, come out fresh so you don't get the trash in it. But I take the blower at very high PSI and blow myself all off so there's no loose debris on me or anything like that. Never had to worry about that. Um, but it's all scuffed out. As you can see, we cleaned everything with the 320 and then we took a burgundy scuff pad and we scuffed it down with Dawn dish soap and um, a scuff pad. If you're new to the channel, just in case, because there are new people and I think some YouTubers forget that as we do grow and we get new subscribers. This is a burgundy scuff pad. So all it is is a, you know, a 320 pad. If you go back uh, the videos, a couple videos back with a single stage, I uh, showed you the part number in the box and everything for this. So go check them out. Um, but that's all we did. 320 scuff pad, Dawn dish soap. Uh, let's get this booth cleaned out and let's get this thing in there and let's shoot some paint. All right, so we knocked out our boat motor cover last night. This is how it turned out. I didn't really want to do a how-to video on the boat motor cover because we went over painting obviously so many times on this channel, being this channel is about uh, building drag cars and painting. So I don't want to like beat a dead horse. You can go back in videos and you know pick up some tips on painting. One day I'll probably do a video on actually like how to paint, like maybe a door um, as far as like how to use your paint gun and all that stuff. Uh, but I didn't want to turn that into one. I just kind of wanted to go over how we do boat motor covers in case you have this project and you want to do your boat motor cover at your house. You kind of know the steps that we take. So more of the prep steps than the actual paint process. Cause once you get to the painting, you got the cat in the bag pretty much because all your work is 75% in prep work. Uh, only probably, you know, a quarter of it is actual painting. So I'll flip the camera around and show you how it turned out. But you know, that's, that's pretty much uh, it on this job. So, I mean, it looks, it looks good. It's not, you know, some Barrett Jackson job. It's a little $200 uh, quick job is how we do them for these. Uh, like I said, a fair price, if you were doing a really good flawless job would probably be anywhere from 500 to a thousand, depending on the shop and depending on what um, brand paint they're using. Uh, a front bumper, an average bumper on a car, insurance work, you're getting about a thousand dollars paid on. So these boat motor covers should definitely, with all the prep work, you should be getting anywhere from 500 to a thousand, depending on the products you're using. So there's a couple little tiny, tiny microscopic pinholes still left in it. Um, let's see if we can pick it up like right there. You know, really needed maybe one more coat of primer or like I said, if you had re gel coated the whole thing before and sanded it down, but then you'd have a lot of time into it and that's where you're going to have to charge the customer, you know, that thousand dollars. So this turned out amazing for most, most people, this works perfect. I mean, you can see the, the reflection and shine. This works, you know, absolutely perfect for most people. And then a lot of people will put either decals back over it. You can order the kits or they will just leave them blank. So big improvement on an older boat to put some life back into it. Like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you on the next video.